What is up guys, Dashing here for episode 734 of Community Universe Mode and edition number 49 of Supremacy, the final episode of Supremacy before this Sunday's Regicide event, guys, from top to bottom. It is going to be a truly juicy card, and most importantly, it is the night. When Jason Spade will finally fall. No longer will we have to live with an undisputed world heavyweight champion like Jason Spade. We will be singing hallelujah because the quote unquote king will be knocked off of his throne in the Royal Rumble match. And if the gods see it fit... The man who is about to put Jason Spade in his place right here, right now, will be our new undisputed world heavyweight champion when the dust settles. You can't ask. For a better way to kick off an episode of Supremacy than Ace Reeves. He finally gets his hands on Jason Spade after the screw job at Battle Scars and the bad call during the Tag Team Cup in Tokyo, Japan. No count outs. No disqualifications tonight. I wouldn't be surprised if Jason Spade doesn't even make it to Regicide. Might have to vacate the title here tonight. Ace Reeves has been fuming. But even still, he keeps a clear head because he knows that he is CMB's last hope. Twenty-nine men and Jason Spade himself in the Royal Rumble this Sunday for the Undisputed World Heavyweight Championship. Only the second time ever that a title has been defended in the Royal Rumble match. The last person to do it was Paul Devine. He successfully retained the title. I don't think Jason Spade has a chance in hell. He's still talking the talk, saying he's ready to take on anyone and everyone. Well, Jason Spade, you're going to eat your words this Sunday. But first, Ace Reeves is going to have you eat his boot. This is the last time... On an episode of Supremacy, we will have to see that rat enter with the undisputed World Heavyweight Championship in his hands. That title's been held hostage long enough. It's time for a new era here in CMV. The family will write the next chapter. And I just hope that Jason Spade, when he's looking up at those lights, that regicide, no longer champion. He can try and pick himself up and maybe make something of himself. Maybe become a decent human being. I don't hold grudges, you know. Jason Spade, all you gotta do is say you're sorry. Admit that you need help and the family is here for you. Until then, Jason Spade, you're a blight. But that blight will be ended this Sunday.
No count outs. No disqualifications. Ace Reeves begged me for this match, and how could I not give it to him after Jason Spade screwed him at Battle Scars? And then again, during the Tag Team Cup in Tokyo, Japan, he and Paul Devine, they got theirs, though, in the end, didn't they? I don't see Paul Devine out here for you tonight, Jason Spade. Nobody's out here for you because everybody's sick and tired of you. You had a little allies to begin with. And that pool is shrinking week after week. You're alone, Jason. Ace Reeves is in. He has a family. I told Ace Reeves we shouldn't make this no disqualifications. Jason Spade thrives in that kind of environment. He's a thug. But Ace Reeves didn't want anything getting between he and taking Spade's head off tonight. Didn't want Spade to get lucky with a count out or a disqualification or paying off the referee, anything like that. That's just the kind of man that Ace Reeves is willing to take those kinds of risks for the Sea of Universe, even though they don't appreciate it. Gets down to it though, this Sunday in the Royal Rumble match, 30 men and every man for himself. God willing, Ace Reeves will show why he is the future of supremacy and be the last man standing. But as we all know, Royal Rumble matches, anything can happen and Jason Spade to the top rope. Looking for that double boot stop, but Ace Reeves, he knows Jason Spade too well at this point. Of course, no Lansenberg lobotomy. If Jason Spade even thinks about hitting that sadistic maneuver, he will be stripped of that championship he loves so much right here, right now, tonight. And he won't have to worry about the Royal Rumble. Reeves to his feet. Oh, and there's that big old spinning kick, but Spade to the top rope again. Moonsaw by the current undisputable heavyweight champion. And of course, he has to brag about it. He can't go for the pin. He has to insult Ace Reeves and these fans. Kick to the gut, doesn't seem to do a whole lot for Jason Spade. Beautiful bangerang though by... Wait a minute, what? Chris Adams? Why is he coming out here though? Adams, you're not supposed to be here. Why are you getting in the ring? Adams, wait a minute! Real guy kicked to Ace Reeves! Now what the hell? Adams, what have you done? You've betrayed Ace Reeves! Chris Adams has betrayed the family. That, that son of a bitch. <sighs> Nearly costing Ace Reeves this match. But of course it's Ace Reeves we're talking about. <sighs> Able to kick out and even hit his patented Spinning heel kick, I'm fuming right now. How could Adams do this? I thought he was a member of my family. He was a brother to Ace Reeves. We were gonna rewrite history here on Supremacy, bring CMB into a golden era. Why would he do this? Jason Spade must have gotten to him, must have corrupted him somehow. Nobody is safe. Jason Spade must be eradicated before he poisons the entirety of CMV. My heart is broken, but I must persevere and support Ace Reeves here in this match as now he struggles 
the fresh Jason Spade. Of course, trying to take advantage of that interference. Why wouldn't he? A good champion, a good person would have helped Ace Reeves to his feet, would have restarted the match, maybe even would have forfeited. But not Jason Spade. And Spade now locking in the Collar City Clutch. But Ace Reeves, he's got a way out of this. He's got a way out of everything, right? Ace Reeves is struggling. But of course he doesn't tap. Into a cross arm bar. Murphy, get in there. He's gonna break Ace's arm, goddammit. But the gravity manipulator able to escape on his own. He doesn't need anyone's help. Curse Chris Adams. Curse Jason Spade. And curse anyone who stands by that creature of the night. Now a sharpshooter being applied as Ace Reeves bleeds from his forehead. This poor man was assaulted in the middle of this match. And for some reason, Murphy didn't call for the bell. I don't care if it's no disqualifications. There it is again. Spinning heel hook. And after everything, Ace Reeves still only gets a two count. He can't believe it, neither can I. Everything has changed here tonight. Chris Adams stabbing us all in the back. And from the top, double rotation, moon stomp. One, two. How can you not admire Ace Reeves? Bleeding, bruised, his heart shattered in a million pieces after a man he thought was his brother turned on him. But still he fights. Any other person in his position would have quit a long time ago. And Spade with no remorse, no sympathy. Barely even human. And at this point, Ace Reeves struggling to even stay standing. And yet, doesn't even attempt to throw in the towel. Doesn't even think about giving up. The blood rushing down his face, and that is the face of a warrior. That is the face of a real undisputed world heavyweight champion. A third time, but no! Dragon Skrrr! And Spade once again into the Collar City Clutch. And this is agonizing to watch. A tear running down my face. What has happened to my family? That 
that miscreant Chris Adams. He'll pay for this. Jason Spade will pay for this. Anyone who even looks at Jason Spade will pay for this. Enjoy it, Spade. Your days are numbered. And I'm going to do my best to compose myself here. We still have an entire show to go, including a main event that I am really looking forward to. Iron Woman, as Joy Justice will challenge Danielle Davis for the CMB Women's Championship. The final chapter will be written between those two. And talking about the women coming up next year. And over the top rope, Battle Royal featuring eight women's division with quite the opportunity on the line as the winner will earn the 20th entrance in the women's battle royal this Sunday at Regicide giving them the greatest odds to win the whole damn thing and of course the winner of that women's battle royal at Regicide will earn a women's championship match next month at Validation our second biggest show of the year the battle of the brands. So let's see who can punch their ticket to an all but guaranteed chance to leave Regicide as number one contender. Please, please don't talk about it any further. I'm trying to momentarily forget about it. But then again, how can you forget about someone you thought you could trust stabbing you in the back for the world to see? Whether it was for his own selfish means or whether Jason Spade got to him in some capacity, it doesn't matter. Chris Adams is no longer a member of my family. And he'll pay for it dearly. Here we go, these eight women have entered the ring. This is much like it will be on Sunday, an over-the-top rope battle royal, meaning you can only be eliminated by getting tossed over the top rope, and both of your feet must hit the floor. No pinfalls, no submissions. Of course, at Regicide, there will be 20 entrants, and the winner of this will be number 20. Throughout history in battle royals and royal rumbles, those who have entered last or close to last have gone on to win. So certainly one of these eight here could very well be our next number one contender for the women's championship. In that ring, you see the China pulling connection. Xiao Rong and RBW, BFFs not afraid to go after each other. They love mixing it up. They're coming off that big win last week over women's hardcore champion Ashley Rain. I'm sorry, former women's hardcore champion Ashley Rain. Still getting used to that after Akira defeated her in Tokyo, Japan, guys. And there's our first elimination, by the way. Amber Reed, surprisingly, the first one to go. But as I was saying, the China Poland connection knocking off the team of 
Ashley Raid and women's champion Danielle Davis. They're feeling real good. They've got to be favorites heading into the Battle Royal Regicide. And it was actually Janet Tor and Amber Reed who won a tag team match last week on Crossfire to qualify for this Battle Royal here. So Amber Reed, like I said, being gone first is quite a shock. But Janet Tor is still in there, along with the likes of Kelsey Hayes and two-time women's champion Angelina Hawkins, the former women's hardcore champion as well, and Spice Rock. guys eliminated at the hands of janitor the cleaner and indeed looking to clean house here tonight in this battle royals now she goes after kelsey hayes someone she knows very well and takes her down with that patented swinging single knee backbreaker as shao wrong looks to eliminate and does eliminate riley van wilson in recent weeks, the China Poland Connection have been trying to get back on the same page after some friction. The last few weeks, I don't know if that elimination there will exactly continue to smooth things over. It might actually piss Riley Van Wilson off a bit more. She's not been in a great mood. She's been trying desperately sort of get back to her old self. Shao Rong, though, she's not taking any prisoners after failing to cash in her Magnificent Six briefcase, becoming only the fourth person in CMB history to unsuccessfully cash in. She wants that women's championship opportunity. She's got to earn it all over again. Jasmine Crossings takes out Xiao Rong and stops the former Miss Magnificent Six from regaining her shot at the Women's Championship. Jazzy, though, has been on a tear this season. Been butting heads with Akira and more recently Kelsey Hayes as we see the final four here. All of them former champions except for Janet Tor. He's not holding anything back against Hayes. Now Angelina Hawkins in big, big time trouble as is Hayes. Oh, but now Jasmine gets taken out by Kelsey. And that's a bit of payback for the match they had a couple weeks ago where Jasmine Crossings beat Kelsey Hayes. Oh, and now Kelsey gonna mock her from in the ring, adding insult to injury. Janet Tor, look at the power of the cleaner. Military press takes out Angelina Hawkins. Incredible. Here we go. Janet Tor and Kelsey Hayes. One of these two will earn the 20th spot in the Women's Battle Royal this Sunday at Regicide, giving them the best odds to win the whole damn thing and earn a Women's Championship match next month at Validation. Showing off, doing what she does best, the two-time Women's Champion. Has been around for Janet Torres' entire career, harking back to NGW. These two have been running into each other. Take down by Kelsey Hayes. Janet Torres definitely been the MVP of this battle royal so far. Can she take it all the way? Hayes, though, as they're back to the ropes. That's not what you want in a match like this. Double leg takedown can barely stand. Cardio is definitely, without a doubt, really, the most important factor in a match like this. Some more strength put on display by the cleaner. And 
and she's looking to take out the last bit of trash. Kelsey Hayes teetering. Can she find a way out of this one? Janet Tor gets her out despite some strong defense from Kelsey Hayes. Janet Tor gets the job done and she earns the 20th spot in the Women's Battle Royal this Sunday at Regicide. Watch out. After a performance like that, Janet Tor is definitely a favorite. Janet Tor will enter last in this Sunday's Women's Battle Royal. Are we looking at the next number one contender for the Women's Championship? Janet Tor has been hunting that title down for a long time. This is the closest she has ever been. Coming up next, guys, we've got some singles competition as Cameron Cray will take a... Wait a minute. I'm getting a, a report. Something... Something's going down backstage. I'm not entirely sure what exactly... But apparently, we're trying to get cameras on the scene to find out exactly what this disruption... I'm being told Cameron Harris has confronted Paul Devine backstage in the hallways. <laughs> and here we can see, guys, Cameron Harris that he and Paul Devine are not finished. Getting in the Asian yeah. sensation space here, stage at supremacy. Yeah. Picking up in Tokyo, Japan, during the tag team cup, but even before that, last week on supremacy when Cameron Harris beat Paul Devine one on one in the middle of the ring, yeah. clean as a whistle, and Cameron. Harris that I'm feeling, that Ace Reeves is feeling, Chris Adams, that dirty, spineless heathen, turning on Ace Reeves earlier tonight, tossing in the match against Jason Spade. If you want to stand, do it at your own peril, Cameron Harris, gonna make Paul Devine pay. Now, this is dangerous. That's a concrete floor, Paul. 
You wouldn't do this to a, a fellow superstar god! Divine intervention! And this is what Jason Spade and his cohorts are all about! Mercilessly beating down a defenseless man! Attacking him! From behind! You all saw it! Paul Devine confronted Cam Harris here! Cam Harris was perfectly willing to have a conversation and Paul Devine started beating the hell out of him! This is disgusting! What else does Jason Spade have planned tonight? Corrupting Chris Adams and now having Paul Devine, his, I guess, attack dog! Try and keep Cam Harris out of the Royal Rumble this Sunday! Downright astonishing the lows Jason Spade will go to. And what has happened to Paul Devine? This used to be a man I can respect. I can't respect this. Not a bit. Animalistic behavior. 24th punch. Get security back there right now. Get security back there right now. Guards, go, go, go. I'm sending my own personal security back there to apprehend that scumbag Paul Devine. Cam Harris was minding his own business and Paul Devine, like a hired goon, just beat the hell out of him. First Chris Adams and now Cam Harris. My family is being torn apart by Jason Spade. Why can't you people see this? Why are you still supporting this madman? <sighs> Gotta take a deep breath. I'm a professional. I'm a professional. I gotta do my job. Not only as commentator, though, as the manager of so Jason Spade, you've gone too far this time. You've gone too far. All right, guys, coming up next, our scheduled matchup between Cameron Cray and Ashley Amell. Of course, Cameron Cray coming off of that dominant victory over Phoenix. Last episode of Supremacy, putting down the rookie in under two minutes. And hopes to follow it up with a just as dominant win against Ashley Amell. Cam 29 challenge will be the Royal Rumble match this Sunday at Regicide. Craig's been saying for a long time he'll be the one. At this point, anybody, I don't care. Could be Bob from the audience. Anyone is better than Jason Spade. And if you disagree with me at this point, you're delusional. And apparently, you want to see CMB burn.
his opponent tonight, guys, none other than one half of Thunder from down under. Ashley Amell, unfortunately, yet again on his own. As soon as his partner, Jacqueline Hendricks, returned from an injury that kept him on the shelf for a year, immediately taken out by Project Psycho. Jordan Nicholson breaking his arm. And so Amel, much like last season, going to have to go it all by himself tonight against Cameron Cray. Here we go. Will Cameron Trey make another meal out of Ashley Amell tonight on supremacy number 49? Let's see if he can last longer than Phoenix did. An immediate pendulum backbreaker by East and Evil. Gets out a couple of elbows, though, to the jaw. Gonna send Ashley Amell to the corner. Turns around with a hook to the jaw, collar and elbow. And pushed up against the ropes. Ooh, but quick thinking from the Aussie. Stun gun doesn't keep down Cray for long, though. Will Ashley Mel be dragged to the bottom of the Thames? Yes, the Thames. Oh, kick to the chest. Dragging Ashley Mel like a carcass that was hunted down in the wilds. Looking to pick apart. His opponent, or maybe better, his prey, trying to use some dirty heel tactics there. Gets a bit miffed that it didn't work. Pull back into a hurricane of Lana. And Ashley Amell, despite the fact that he is once more a singles competitor, trying to stay positive. Will that help him out, though? Jumping right over Trey's head. Ducking a clothesline, and there's a beautiful running elbow. Charging up, and seems to have the support of these fans. Amel is going to the corner. What is he calling for here? Cameron Cray turning around into a spear. Spear by Ashley Amel. One. Ooh, and perhaps it'll be Cameron Cray. Who is quickly dispatched of tonight. Oh, but maybe not. Headbutt gets an elbow to the face. Caught with a swinging neck breaker. Cameron Cray, not sure if he's going it, though. Ashley Amell staring him down. Going to take more than just a stare, though, to knock off East End Evil. Ashley Amell helps him to his feet. And Amell could be going for that Death Valley driver. Cameron Cray knows it. He's able to escape knife edge chop, trapped in the corner. And the tree of woe, not the sort of position you want to be in. It's like a, a deer being drained, hung upside down. And Cameron Cray has had enough, looking to sink his teeth in. Bottom of the names it could be, no, says Ashley Amell. Instead, a big Irish whip sends Cray to the outside. Amel not going to use this time to catch his breath. Stand on top of Cameron Cray like a monkey on a cupcake. Arm drag takedown. Amel back into the ring. Cameron Cray in hot pursuit. Much more competitive than I thought it would be, honestly. Not sure that I gave Amel much credit. Of course, last season was really rough for him. Not a whole lot of wins, but a couple of big upsets. Remember, he holds a win over former undisputable heavyweight champion, Chris Proudfoot. Close line and out of the ring yet again. Mel gonna mock him. Taunted and saying, get back in the ring if you have what it takes. Cameron Cray most definitely has what it takes. There's that bicycle boot just wiped the face off of Ashley Amell's head. One, 
two. That won't be enough. Cameron Cray, however, certainly has a backup plan. But Ashley Amell is quicker on the trigger. Float over DDT. And just like that, downward spiral for East End Evil. One, two. Could it be another big upset win for Ashley Amell? Line up Cray's arms. Oh, but the low blow! You're telling me Murphy didn't see that? Ashley Amell having the wherewithal to roll out onto the apron, luckily, and dodge Cameron Cray who is yet again looking to lock in bottom of the Thames. And it looks like he'll lock it in anyway. Oh no, a side headlock instead. Trying to slow things down is Cray. I don't know what's going on with all this lag tonight, guys. I no idea where it's coming from. Oh, another bicycle kick at this time. Uh, Mel gets cracked open in a beer. He is spurting blood like a leaky faucet and now has no defense. Hang on! Uh, Mel countering the things again! And Cameron Cray, you can tell at this point, is getting fed up. I don't think he expected such a match from Ashley Amell, much like I said earlier. He was looking for another Phoenix type outcome, but Ashley Amell making him work for this victory. Ashley Amell gets tired of waiting send Cray back into the ring. Cray quickly to his seat, and now he's the one talking trash. Hook to the jaw. No way Jose says a bell. Double rotation, cross body, hooks the legs. One. Oh. Nearly a steal. Face the drop kick. Amel just trying to Keep the pressure on right now. Another basement drop kick. Worked so well the first time. Off the ropes. Cray on the rebound. And Amel wants to make sure that he maintains control. This modified abdominal stretch ensures that Cameron Cray stays grounded, but breaks free. Does the devilish Brit. Wants that boot. Third time's the charm, they say. Ashley Amell isn't a fan. Forearm smash ducked. Running elbow again slams the canvas. Ashley Amell. Oh, it's in the corner. I believe he wants another spear, but Cameron Cray begins to stir. Ashley Amell has to change up his game plan, and that might be to his detriment. Oh, a shout out to a man he knows very well. 21, 1, 2. Oh, but not quite. Jay Hoxton caliber doesn't get the three. Look how smart Cameron Cray is, though. Rolling to the outside. Whoa. Ashley Mel, despite the fact that he's bleeding, he's sweaty, he's tired, he's hurting for certain. Making sure that these fans leave happy. A snapmare from Cray. Punch to the gut though, Amel dangerous. Even from the canvas. Well, to 
Amell thinking about here. Close lines, Cameron Cray out of the ring, and Ashley Amell, these fans chanting, this is awesome, before Amell even completes his suicide dive. What a match, guys. Who would have expected these two to blow the roof off the joint? Sweep, moonsault combination by the Australian. Who's looking thick, looking good. Ashley Amell prepped as a singles competitor. He had training all of last season. Pinfall attempt. Only gets a two count though. And Amell with his hands on his hips. Can't let that doubt get to him. Ashley Amell on the precipice of a huge upset as he goes to the Death Valley Driver again countered by Cameron Gray and there's another boot. Doesn't even go for the pin this time. Cray taking down Amel and rubbing his bloody face into the canvas. That's just disrespect through and through from Cameron Cray. Now goes for the pin. One, two, no! And Cray looking down at Ashley Amel almost as if to say, you have got to be kidding me yet again. He's tried throughout this entire match to lock in that signature submission of his, and finally he does, dragging Ashley Amell down to the bottom of the things, and Amell quickly taps. What a match. It certainly wasn't a repeat of what happened to Phoenix last week. But in the end, Cameron Cray victorious once more. Oh, and hang on a second. Come on, after a match like that, it's as if Cameron Cray has insulted Ashley Amell, dared to give him such a fight. Attacking Amell while he's down. This is disgusting behavior. What do you expect from a man who calls himself the East End Evil? Cameron Cray, victory. And the chair on top there, attacking a down Ashley Amell. <clears throat> now finally leaving the ring, and Amell is completely defenseless as he lays there without his partner, given a hell of a fight. But hang on, wait a minute, who, who the hell is that? Someone coming out of the but it looks like ATO. Wait a minute, the former Fusion Tag Team is in World Tag. Champions Malcolm Friday, but look at this! Before they attack, Jacqueline Hendricks is back, coming to rescue this friend when he needs it most. What the hell did we just see? The ATL back, and they were looking to make a statement at the hands of Ashley Amell, but Jacqueline Hendricks, I guess he was in the building, and even though he still isn't clear. He wasn't going to sit back and watch his friend be attacked again. But more importantly, Deshaun Porter and Malcolm Fry are back. We haven't seen them in over a year. Former Fusion Tag Team Champions and World Tag Team Champions. And despite the fact that their attempt to finish when Cameron Cray started was uh, thwarted. They still made their presence known. And speaking of tag matches, coming up next, we've got a triple threat tornado tag team match. Futuring some competitors from the women's division, much like that Battle Royal earlier tonight. We're going to see some of the take in the women's battle royal this Sunday at Regicide paired up. Hoping for some momentum. But a big story goes 
and actually Amel are teaming up. Of course, actually Rain losing for Women's Hardcore Championship to Akira last week in Tokyo, Japan during the Tag Team Cup. What an upset! Akira, a month into her CMV career, in her home country, in front of her friends, family, becoming the new women's hardcore champion. Ashley Mel isn't backing down. She has immediately cashed in her rematch clause, and she will get it this Sunday at Regicide. Mel talked about how it's really debilitating. She spent so long getting back to the top. Scratched and clawed. And the season she came back from injury, she was a house of fire. Taking on anyone and every big win. And that battle was, of course, in that thing before I became women's hardcore champion. But just over a week later, losing it to the upstart, the rookie, Akira. Who is unbeaten and is looking to be future star in the women's division. But can Ashley Rain make sure that her time with the women's hardcore championship is even shorter? We'll have to wait and see. Tonight, the question is can they work together? Against the formal alliance of Angelina Peaches and May Felix and Rami Young. Felix and Young, they've teamed together before. They were both a part of that fatal four way match at Battle Scar for the Women's Hardcore Championship. The stretch to call friends. Certainly, they're willing to work together tonight if it means picking up the all important moments of heading into the Battle Royal this Sunday at Regicide, where they both. Tender for the women's championship. Same can be said for Angelina and Peaches, who were part of a threat match last week, which was won by Cynthia Grimm. So opponents last week, partners tonight. A lot of combustible elements in this one. Angelina makes her entrance, guys. We have a tweet here from Joy Justice who says, Davis, I hope you've been practicing because tonight the war ends. Tonight we see who is the women's champion. Hashtag see you soon. Indeed, our main event. The battle comes to an end. Joy Justice, Danielle Davis, Iron Woman for the Women's Championship. It was Joy Justice who was victorious at Ascendance. Danielle Davis had battle scars. Who is the better woman? It's decided in tonight's main event. And Peach is definitely left an impression in that triple threat match last week, her debut, despite the fact that she didn't get the victory. And she's hoping to follow it up here, teaming with Angelina. And as this is a triple threat tornado tag team match, that means all six ladies will be competing at the same time, no tags necessary. Pinfall or submission in the ring. We'll get one of these three teams a much needed win. May Felix, upon debuting here in CMV, had a rocket strapped to her back. Wins over 
Angelina Hawkins and Joy Davis, while they were both champions, led her to battle scars in that Fatal 4 match for the Women's Hardcore Championship. But unfortunately, she was the one that got pinned by Ashley Rain. Maybe Felix is hoping to get back on track. Maybe adjust that rocket a little bit. And prepare for the Battle Royal this Sunday. And her partner in the same boat, unsuccessful at Battle Scars and capturing the Women's Hardcore Championship, Rami Young. Who has been, I don't know if I would necessarily say targeted, but more stalked, perhaps groomed by Tilco Val over the last few weeks. Can she focus up here, and more importantly at Regicide, perhaps earn another shot at the Women's Championship? Always a pleasure, Chrissy. Is it wrong? I don't think so. I think it's incredibly accurate. That's what Tailcoat Val does best. She grooms. And here she is, the new CMB Women's Hardcore Champion. She is riding a high right now on cloud nine. Imagine that, guys. In front of your friends, your family, your colleagues, and your home country, winning your first major championship just a month into your CMB career and beating perhaps the greatest female competitor of all time in CMB history, this woman right here, Ashley Rain. But Ashley Rain is a fighter. She's slipped and falled many times in the past. This might be the roughest one yet though, just as she made it back to the top of the mountain, the peak, she slipped all the way back down to the bottom. But Ashley Rain is ready to make that climb again. This Sunday, she's got a rematch. Will she become the first ever two-time women's hardcore champion? And prove that Tokyo, Japan was nothing more than a lucky night for Akira. So here we go, triple threat tornado tag team match. Momentum at stake. And Akira and Ashley Amel work together. That is the main focal point of this one. Close line to May Felix. These two continuing from battle scars. I'm sure May Felix would love nothing more than to pin Ashley Amel here in this match as Peaches targets the new women's hardcore champion Akira and at ringside it's Angelina and Rami Young going at it. Now know that Janet Tour will enter number 20 in the women's battle royal this Sunday at Regicide after winning the mini battle royal earlier tonight. And even though that gives her considerable odds it's still anyone's game. You never know what can happen. Could be Angelina, could be Peaches, May Felix, Rama Young, or any other member of the women's division that earns that championship shot next month at a validation. Of course, who will be the champion? We'll find out in our main event tonight. Joy Justice, Danielle Davis, Iron Woman. The final battle, the war ends tonight. We'll find out who is the better woman definitive. That is Peaches, Chrissy. Who gets kicked in the back by Akira. 
know. Now Akira has a big spotlight shining down on her. She already did. After her amazing performance in that six-pack challenge at the top of the season, winning it, and then getting a victory alongside Ashley Rain of all people. And then, of course, in Tokyo, Japan, beating Rain to become the new women's hardcore champion, and my god, Akira just damn near killed Peaches, holy shit! She just German suplexed her onto the apron. Peach is crumpling like a piece of uh, notebook paper getting thrown into the trash can. My lord, that did not look like a tickle, ladies and gentlemen. Now we're all waiting to see if Akira will crack under all this pressure, all these eyes being on her. Where she can carry that weight. Remember, pinfall submission only counts in the ring. Angelina and Rami Young have not stopped beating the hell out of each other at ringside since this match started. They can't win out there, though. Rain trying her best to get back to a vertical base. Peaches is definitely a tough SOB after taking that German suplex onto the apron. She's still standing. She's still fighting. She's in control right now. As finally Angelina and Rami Young find their way back into the ring. Jumping DDT from Young. get between May Felix and Ashley Rain. And look at that, Rami Young using the maneuver Ashley Rain used at Battle Stars to win the Women's Hardcore Championship. Off the top. Doesn't really find a home, though, for that leg drop. That's going to cost her. Uh-oh, Akira. Not holding anything back against the rookie Peaches. It goes kicks to the midsection, but meanwhile, look at the corner. Ashley Rain has just nailed her vintage moonsaw and might have this match won as Akira tries to keep Peaches at bay, but only got a two count. May Felix is not going to be pinned by Ashley Rain again. Not a whole lot of people can say they kicked out of the raindrop. That top rope moonsault from Ashley Rain. May Felix, though, is not most people. But look at Angelina. Stalking Akira as Peaches takes care of May Felix. Single knee face breaker. Hooks the leg, but Rami Young with the quickness she missed, though, makes up for it on the second try. Rami Young fighting on her own right now. Angelina handing out these single knee face breakers like candy on Halloween, but Akira doesn't want anything to do with it. Akira instead a big Jason Spade fan. Ugh. As she tries to lock in the Color City Clutch. Twist the fate for Rami Young. Gets interrupted. Instead there's a school boy kick to the side of the head. What's May Felix doing here? She goes for her knee. I'm not sure who got hit. And Rami Young hitting Peaches for a near three count. About as near as it gets. These six ladies have been beating the snot out of each other. That tells you how important momentum is going into regicide this Sunday. For Ashley Rain, it's regaining the Women's Hardcore Championship. For Akira, it's retaining the Women's Hardcore Championship, proving her win in Tokyo, Japan was not a fluke. And for the four others, it's about heading into that battle royal and walking out as number one contender. Ashley Rain sends her out onto the apron. 
Knocks her down to the floor as Mayfield hopes for a pin on Angelina. But Peaches makes the save. Peaches just flying around the ring tonight. As Akira knocks the boots off of Rami Young. Turns her around in the corner. Send her shoulder first into the ring post. That's a quick way to injure your shoulder. Oh, Referee Murphy getting squished behind uh, Angelina there in the corner. I don't think he much uh, minded it though. taken care of for the moment. Quick soul kick to the midsection. May Felix fires back though with a forearm smash. As a basement drop kick from Ashley Rain has Peaches reeling. Single knee face breaker. And that is the perfect setup, or at least Ashley Rain thinks so. Rain drop! The ring is clear. Fall one, two, three. Ashley Rain picks up the dub for she and Akira. All things considered, Akira and Ashley Rain were pretty damn well together. They're undefeated as a tag team. But I assure you, there will be no sort of holding back from either woman this Sunday at Regicide. Whatever respect they have for each other, whatever friendship they might share is going to be put on hold when that Women's Hardcore Championship is on the line. Partners tonight, opponents this Sunday, but a win is a win, and they're gonna celebrate. And come back, guys. Coleman event. And I want to say, if you're looking forward to seeing Jordan Nickerson in action tonight, I regret to inform you that match is not happening. He was scheduled to go one on one with Danger Cat, but well, if you've been keeping up with things on our website, communityuniverse.formotion.com, or even our Discord, or really anywhere, you had to have heard of the fact that Los Leos Fatalis are no more. Golden Cat has had enough of Danger Cat costing them big opportunity after big opportunity. The Fatal 4-Way Tag Team ladder match at Battle Scars and of course the Tag Team Cup in Tokyo, Japan where Danger Cat was busy eating sushi on the apron while Golden Cat was getting pinned. But I saw Danger Cat a couple days ago. He's somehow exponentially bigger than what we saw in Tokyo, Japan. He is not taking this breakup well. I'm honestly fearing for him now. But Golden Cat, he, he can't just sit any longer. He's been trying to help his friend. simply can't. He's done all he can. He doesn't want to watch Danger Cat beat himself to death and continue to cost them their careers here in CMV. So Danger Cat not here tonight. And unfortunately, that match is not going to happen with Jordan Nicholson. But we are getting a hell of a replacement, guys. It's coming up next our co main event. One on one, non title, Senator Shea Oxton taking on Pierre Thompson. Shea Oxton has been hounding Pierre Thompson for over a month. No, 
false start when he attacked him after one of his matches. It was the start of the season. And last week came out during Peter Thompson's match with Jaden Shadow and cost the big dog. Pierre Thompson suffering his first loss. To... Wait a minute, wait a minute. Pierre Thompson does not see Hoxton coming from behind the center and taking a cheap shot at the international champion. This was supposed to be a scheduled non-title match, but Hoxton keeps on throwing all these curveballs every time Thompson thinks he has Hoxton figured out. He gets a rude awakening. And now these two battling atop the ramp. I'm not sure the referee Murphy is going to let this match properly continue. That's even if these two make it down to the ring. But I'll tell you what, Thompson has had enough of Hoxton's BS. If he wants a fight, he's going to get it. Throwing him into the security barricades here along the ramp. Hoxton fires back. Big shot with that schoolboy suplex. And the international championship is just left laying at the top of the stage. Look at this guy's Pierre Thompson wants this match to happen. He's leading Hoxton down to the ring. It's up to Murphy. And Murphy's gonna ring the bell, guys. This match is gonna happen. Murphy with some leniency as Hoxton turns to the hard camera. Saying he's going in for the kill. So this non-title match going to properly get underway as the Senator full mounts Hoxton. Oh, with a stomp to the gut of Pierre. And now a pinfall attempt. These two go way back. It was two years ago that they fought over the international championship at Absolution. And even though Hoxton couldn't take the title from Pierre on that night, a month later at homecoming, Hoxton did in a fatal four-way, ended Pierre Thompson's second reign as international champion. Hoxton, who alongside Xander Slate, lost the unified world tag team titles at Battle Scars, failed to recapture them during the Tag Team Cup in Tokyo, Japan. And with Xander Slate, a crossfire superstar, Hoxton on his own once again. And he has made sure that he has a backup plan. He's been hunting Pierre Thompson since before. He and Slate lost the Unified World Tag Team titles. Beautiful Tokyo World DDT, but only gets a one count. And a win here for Hoxton as he checks his pulse definitely ensure him a future shot at the international championship will he end the third international championship reign of the big dog Hoxton throughout the career of Pierre Thompson's been like that itch on his back oh but the play of the day looking to fix that itch one two but only a two count Kick to the midsection, and the highlight puts a stop to Hoxton, but not fully. 2.999. Hoxton's got to know what he's getting himself into. Pierre Thompson has been waiting a long time to be in the position that he is currently in as international champion unbeaten until Hoxton cost him that match against Jaden Shadow last week. If Hoxton wanted to get under the skin of Pierre Thompson and piss him off, he has certainly done that. And that's only been amplified after that cowardly attack from behind before this match started. Thompson said at the start of this season, I'm taking no prisoners. This season, you will see me holding the undisputable heavyweight championship. And Thompson knows that as international champion, his chances of earning a shot at the world title are better than without. And Hoxton's trying to take that title from him. Slam from the 
is Senator of Nevada, but that gets counted play today, and that apparently so did Pierre. And those precious couple of seconds that is all Hoxton needed. Finds a way back into this match. Gets the choke slam. Hooks the leg. One, two, only a two count. Hoxton with a dropped jaw. But he knows. Just a three count away from earning international championship match. Hoxton wants to join that exclusive club that Pierre Thompson is now a member of, three-time international champions. He would join the likes of Randy Borton and Troy Voodoo. Pierre Thompson of his opponents, the 360 power slam, but he's got something different in store for Hoxton, deep impact. One, two, three. Thanks for coming, Hoxton. You wanted this match and you got it. The big dog putting the senator in his place tonight. But as Hoxton finished chasing Pierre Thompson in the international championship, that's the question. Will this loss deter him? Or will it make him only more vicious in his pursuit? Because he's already been revving it up week after week. Attacks, distractions, slander. Pierre Thompson defending his territory, defending his yard. I think Hoxton's a cat person. Now it is time, my fine feather friends, my beauties, for our main event of the evening. The CMB Women's Championship is on the line. It is the final battle, the end of the war between Joy Justice and Danielle Davis. It was Joy Justice who shocked everyone, I think, towards the end of last season, coming out of nowhere to win the Queen of the Ring tournament and earn a shot at the Women's Championship on the grandest stage of them all, Ascendance 8. And at that event, all it took was one, one choke slam, and Joy Justice was the new Women's Champion. But Danielle Davis, she did not back down. She picked herself up. She dusted herself off. She said, hey, I made a mistake. Maybe I underestimated Joy Justice. She didn't make that mistake again. At Battle Scars, all it took was one glow. And Danielle Davis was once again his champion. Now, the dust is going to settle. We'll see who truly is. Who will be champion. Iron Woman match, guys. Whoever has the most falls, either by pin, submission, the end of the time limit will be declared the women's champion. The reason I didn't say that countouts or disqualifications count towards point overalls is because there are no countouts or disqualifications in this Iron Woman match. 
anything goes. And of course we know that the loser of this match, guys, will not be able to challenge again for the Women's Championship so long as the other is still champion. So let's say Joy Justice loses here. She will not be able to earn another Women's Championship match so long as Danielle Davis is still Women's Champion. So truly, this is the end of the line for one of these women, at least for a while. And we also know that the winner of this match, the Women's Champion, will be a part of the Women's Battle Royal this Sunday at Regicide. And if the Women's Champion is victorious, she will be allowed to hand pick her opponent, her challenger, for next month's validation event. Whereas if anyone else wins, they'll earn the women's championship match. While the other will be forced to sit at home and watch. But a tweet here, guys, from Hunter Quinn. He says, so... Because of Danger Fat's choices after Golden Cat left him, we didn't get to see Jordan Nicholson versus Danger Fat. Oh well. At least this will give Project Psycho much needed time to heal up and get ready for our first defense against the Cowboys from Hell. Indeed, I think both Jordan Nicholson and Hunter Quinn could use some time off. Neither of them is at 100%, but that being said, that didn't stop them from winning the Tag Team Cup in Tokyo, Japan, or the titles from the SNS Pronection, so. Danielle Davis ready for this fight. Ready for any fight on any night. That's what makes Danielle Davis special. For over a year, she climbed the mountain. And there were many times where she slipped and fell back down to the bottom. But she never stopped. She persevered. Won that women's championship last season from Kelsey Hayes. Defended it against anyone and everyone until she ran into Joy Justice. But even still, she was able to win it back. Can she keep it? Stone-faced. Danielle Davis usually very happy-go-lucky in a fantastic mood, but Joy Justice has gotten on her last nerve. Hopefully the tension that these two share won't cloud either's judgment. They've got to be focused for a match like this. That's what it is all about. The women's championship is on the line. Joy Justice, the queen of the spiders. Danielle Davis, the women's champion. 20 minutes on the clock. Whomever has the most falls, either by pin or submission at the end of the 20 minutes, will be women's champion. And will prove without a shadow of a doubt that she is the better woman. Irish whip into the corner. Joy Justice ricochets. Ooh, able to get out an elbow, though, and immediately put Danielle Davis down. Ward with that Samoan drop. You see how Davis wanted to start out the match a bit slower, feeling Joy Justice out. Joy Justice like, nope. Let me real quick put you through the canvas. And a tweet now, guys, from the international champion, Pierre Thompson. He says, be careful whose yard you step in, Hoxton. You might not like what it is on the other side of the fence. Thompson sending more shots at Hoxton after beating him in our last match, saying, hey, man, you're the one that came after me, and you paid for it. You want to keep coming after me, you're going to see what happens. So we're looking to see what happens here between Joy Justice and Danielle Davis. Again, no countouts and no disqualifications. We don't want either of these two winning on some sort of fluke. Oh, face first in the mat. And again. And that's all you need to see to know the difference between these two competitors. Joy Justice is ruthless, merciless, nasty in that ring. Does not hold back, does not take pity. Whereas Danielle Davis, incredibly athletic, extremely agile, loves a competitive bout. 
stepping into that ring every single week is what brings Danielle Davis Joy against the best of the best. Look at this. Schoolboy catching Joy on the rebound. And that's how fast Danielle Davis can have you beat. It's not just the size that's the difference between these two. As you can see, Joy Justice and Choice. Quite the height advantage and a power advantage, no doubt about that. Personalities, literally everything. I don't think these two share one similarity except for the fact that they have both held the women's championship. Nobody has gained a point yet. Only a couple of minutes into this match though. 17 minutes and 10 seconds left on the clock. Joy Justice putting Danielle Davis up on the top rope. Danger zone for the women's champion. Superplex from the queen of the spiders. And she looks for that first point. Shoots the half, lateral press, one. Not even a two count though. Remember, all it took Joy Justice at a sentence was one choke slam. All it took Danielle Davis at Battle Squares was one Globo. It's going to take a lot more from either of these two tonight, though. Joy Justice now locking in a half Boston Crab. Joy Justice getting her head smashed off the canvas. Another difference being that Danielle Davis has the support of these fans. Always. They are behind the women's champion. And this is why she's not afraid to take risks. Caution to the wind. And these fans are on their feet. Will it pay off? Oh, no. Oh, God. Oh, well, that didn't end well for either of them. That looked disgusting. It looked like Joy Justice snapped in two. Still goes for the pin. Only gets a one count, though. I don't think that's exactly how Daniel Davis wanted that maneuver to uh, go, but... Uh-oh, guys. Joy Justice. Hang on! Dropping Davis unceremoniously from the torture rack position. Onto that matting that covers, of course, the concrete floor, but barely only gets a two count. You gotta be kidding me. Danielle Davis trying to put some room between she and Joy. Catch your breath for a minute, you see Murphy. Ready to count the pinfall or call a submission at a moment's notice. Davis now going to use the ringside area like a weapon. Got to do what she's got to do to get an edge over Joy Justice. First the snake eyes, now just a straight up face smash into the apron. Daniel Davis looks for the pin, only gets a one. last long in a slugfest with Joy Justice. Crisp Enziguri. And now into the announce table. Making sure that she gets a nice taste of that hard plastic covering. Nearly knocked over my Mountain Dew. Come on now. Good thing I've got my security guards here with me for this match. I don't know that I trust either of these two. Look at Daniel Davis. The oh! Counter from Joy, quick, quick, quick thinking from the Queen of the Spiders. But then, of course, she had to talk. She had to mock Danielle Davis. And you give Danielle Davis an inch, she will take it a mile. That's what we just saw right there. Surfboard stretch. Danielle Davis wants to slow things down a little bit. 
Remember, if this match ends in a draw, Danielle Davis will retain the Women's Championship, so I'm sure Davis would like to score a point, but if this does indeed end nil, 0-0, zero, zero, Davis will leave as Women's Champion. That's a strategy she could look to employ here, just go on the defensive. Thrown out of the ring, Joy Justice goes for the pin, nearly gets the three count. 2.999. A little bit too close for comfort. And it looks like Joy Justice is getting gassed, guys. In a match like this, it is all about cardio, cardio, cardio. If you're winded early on like Joy Justice here, that does not bode well. I think that Danielle Davis definitely has the advantage in that category. Oh! Black off the canvas like a bug. Running straight into someone's windshield on the highway. That 110th Street slam, modified spy buster, baby. Woo! Enjoy Justice is taking control, lickety split. Going for the choke slam! All the way up and back down again. That meant doom for Danielle Davis at Ascendance 8. Will it tonight in this Iron Woman match? Yes, Joy Justice scores the first fall. And now it's on Danielle Davis. With 11 minutes and 30 seconds left. She's got to get either a pinball or a submission to tie things up again. Once more, if this match ends in a draw, Danielle Davis will retain. But all Joy has to do now is defend, defend, defend for the next 11 minutes and 10 seconds and she will be women's champion once again. That's a lot of time though. Not gonna count out Danielle Davis just yet. Danielle going dead weight here in front of the announce table. DDT! That just cracked the skull of Joy Justice. It might be enough to tie things up, it is! And just like that, not a minute later, Daniel Davis has scored a fall and things are tied up once again, 1-1. Big old roar from the women's champion. He's making sure to stay on top of Joy Justice like peanut butter on jelly, baby. Sends her back into the ring. To the top rope. Do we have a Globo? Tries for it, but unsuccessful in her attempt. And now Joy gonna throw her across the ring. Didn't seem to have a problem with it when Jason Spade retained that way via a draw in the championship scramble. Hmm. Interesting. Look, Danielle Davis has got to do whatever she's got to do to leave tonight still women's champion. I'm not going to hold anything against her. Twist of fate onto the middle rope. Oh, that'll give you some serious rope burn on your throat. This didn't go so well last time for Danielle Davison. Not this time either. She just face planted from the top rope to the outside of the ring, but still kicks out before even the count of one. Murphy was a bit slow. Trips the leg. Nine minutes and 10 seconds left on the clock, guys. 1-1 one, one currently. Joy Justice got a pinfall off a choke slam. Danielle Davis got a pinfall off a DDT at ringside. Now look at the disrespect from Joy Justice. But of course, these two do not like each other in any sort of way. Joy Justice has the support of her family. Daniel Davis has the support of these CMV fans. Justice been a busy bee as of late. Partaking in the kidnapping of Schmitty, bringing him to the bloody forest. Unspeakable horrors, I'm sure. Can't really feel bad, though, for the global champion. Will the matriarch recapture the 
Crown Jewel of the women's division. Danielle Davis single knee face breaker, kicking it old school. Back to her NG dub days. Joy Justice doing an excellent job using the ring like a tag team partner. Here comes another choke slam, guys. Justice has been dominating these last couple of minutes. Can she retake the lead? One, two, no, Davis this time able to kick out, but barely. And you see the look on Joy's face, a very rare look, as if to say, you've got to be kidding me. I can't believe that. But making sure that she stays in control. Tombstone. Wait, what? Danielle Davis just countered the Tombstone Pile Driver. Hitting Joy Justice with her own maneuver. I never thought I would see Danielle Davis hitting a Tombstone Pile Driver, but there you go. And now a shout out to her good friend Ashley Rain. Sunny side down. One, two, three. Davis takes the lead. It is now 2 1. And she looks to take the lead even further. But hardly a one count. Six minutes, 45 seconds left on the clock, guys. Danielle Davis is up by one point, 2 1. Now Joy Justice is to kick it into overdrive because she'll have to score two falls in order to beat Danielle Davis and lead tonight as women's champion. She's got to tie it up, and then she's got to take the lead. Remember, if this ends in a tie, if it ends in a draw, Danielle Davis leaves as women's champion. Can Joy Justice do it? Six minutes and 10 seconds. Is that enough time for her to score two falls? Davis, whoa! How are you not a fan of Danielle can do something like that. Nobody, that's who. A freaking handspring into the rope, flipping back into a whirly bird head scissors, and there's another twist of fate onto the middle rope. Davis, though, is holding her head. That's not a good sign. That's never a good sign. Showing her. She's got an opening. She's trying to compose herself, trying to catch her breath while Joy just right into her like a brick wall. Oh dear God, no. No, 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 Joy Justice is done a holding back! Jackknife powerbomb on the outside of the ring. One, two, how did Danielle Davis kick out of that? have a broken after being on the receiving end of that punches joy justice though remember what i talked about earlier cardio 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 in a match like this joy justice is tired but she is still fighting another torture rack bomb can she get to the pin in time though hooks the leg murphy hurry up one two no whether it was Murphy taking an extra second, or whether it just wasn't enough. Joy Justice isn't quitting, guys. There is still four minutes and five seconds left on the clock. Joy Justice has to tie things up. A second torture rack bomb on the outside. One, two, three, and it's tied. It's tied, two, two, Joy Justice. She now has three minutes and 50 seconds. One more fall and she'll take the lead. But if this ends in a draw, Danielle Davis leaves as women's champion. Can Justice do it? It's impossible. We're going to find out. Danielle Davis throwing Joy Justice out of the ring. This late into the match, willing to take a risk. Suicide dive, cannonball, time. These fans. 
Edge chanting, this is awesome, what a match this has been, they ain't lying. It's not even over yet, and it's going to be a contender for match of the year. Another DDT, stall crack, but Daniel Davis not content. Forearm smash caught by Joy Justice, big boot. Looks for a brain chop, Davis comes through the kick to the midsection, and another one, and another DDT. She can't even get to her feet. But still, she hooks the leg to take the lead again. One, two, three, and she does. Three, two. Danielle Davis in the lead once more. And with just two minutes and 40 seconds left, Danielle Davis Wants to make sure that Justice has no chance. But there's still a possibility. I'll tell you what. I don't want to eat my words. I'm not calling this one. Not yet. Joy Justice can still tie things up. She can still maybe even possibly win. But she's got to hurry up. The clock is ticking. There's no time to dilly-dally. Danielle Davis knows she's got to go into defense mode. Keep Joy Justice from hitting one of those big maneuvers. To the top rope. Low bow, maybe. Yes! To the heart! But doesn't go for the pin. Now she does after a cheeky stop. One count? Spider deities must be looking favorably upon. And here, Danielle Davis doing what she should be doing, guys. Justice for me. Can she top? Jawbreaker, Danielle Davis. Or at least tries to. Another spy buster. Justice, as the clock ticks down. 35 seconds, tombstone pile driver countered. There's the back shot from Danielle Davis. One, two. Danielle Davis. Fifteen. Well, that's not the. Five. Still. Women's champion emphatically as she hits another spinning on prettier. Wow. Crazy match, great match. Insanely competitive, so close at times, but Danielle Davis winning emphatically, dominantly there at the end. The finishing score, 4-2. Danielle Davis proves she is the better woman, proves she deserves to be women's champion, proves that it's going to take a whole hell of a lot for that championship to leave her waist again. Standing tall, but barely. Congratulations, Danielle Davis. The women's champion.
Mama Mavis, oh mama, they try my patience. Is gone. Who is left to save us? We mourn. I'm praying for my neighbors. They say the devil's at work and is calling favors. You say I'm dangerous. I speak for the nameless. I fly with the vultures. I be with them bangers. If change don't come, then the change won't come. If the bands make them dance, then the rain gon' come. Am I passing through the night? Looking to your eyes. All the world is out of your head. Be ready for it. Something out the country fears about to change is born. 